friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another Monday This and That vlog where I talk about many different topics, answering questions that may have come in in the last week, and whatever I feel like talking about. So let's get to the topics of today, starting with the many uses of orange peels. Now, I do have a separate video I did a few years ago that I will link to down below where I cover probably a little bit more in depth than what I'm going to do today, but mostly I just want to remind people about this. Now, I say orange peels, but really the peels that we use are more like satsumas, mandarins, and the like. Anything that's a thinner type peel with less pith. But you can use orange peels as well. I just call them all orange. And you can also use lemon peels in very much the same way. So right here what I have going on is I just started this yesterday and it is a batch of orange peel and hibiscus soda, natural soda. So I'm fermenting it for a few days. So it's just now starting to get fizzy as I started it yesterday afternoon. And so that's one of the things that probably won't be in that particular video. So another reason why I like doing videos like this where I can just sort of touch on this stuff again. But yes, you can make a nice healthy natural soda with full of probiotics by doing a ferment like this. So I'll link to, actually I'll link to last year's fermented February collaboration that we do with Fermented Homestead. And um, I do show making this along with making some vinegar. And then back here, I've got a couple more vinegars going. Let me move this. I'm not gonna pull those out, but the two in the back both have citrus peels in them. The one in the middle is nothing but citrus peels where the one in the back is juniper from our front yard and citrus peels and then right here is powdered citrus peels so and again this is all like the orange type peels i use the powder in a lot of things for flavoring so i'll use it for flavoring different types of sweet breads and icing such as my orange almond cinnamon rolls i even put it inside the cinnamon rolls themselves and pancakes and pumpkin bread and the orange chicken it's an asian orange chicken a sweet and spicy type chicken uh, the sauce that i make and i use the orange peels in that and then also i use the chunks more like this for adding to teas both for the flavor but also to pull the as i'm brewing the tea i'm pulling the quercetin out of the peels by doing this um, I might lose the vitamin C because I'm simmering it. I'm making it more of a decoction, but I'm getting that quercetin out. And I'll also even use it in making an orange cream chocolate. And I'll try to link to some of these recipes down below. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share that with people that there's so many ways that you can use your orange peels. Now, typically what I do now is I just put them, because most of the time we're eating this kind of citrus, it's during the winter and we have fires going in the wood stove so I just put them on the rack right next to the wood stove and let them dry there. They dry, they're usually dry within a day or two at most. And then I just jar them up. I actually have several jars. I even have a couple of uh, half gallon jars full of peels because of all the many things I can do with them. And then, like I said, once you powder them up, using them for flavoring. I, oh, there was something else I just made. Oh, I made an apple crisp. And I decided to make it an orange vanilla apple crisp. I add a little bit of orange juice, but a whole bunch of the peel powder into both the crisp on the top and into the apples themselves on the bottom. And so that actually turned out pretty nice. And then of course I also added my homemade vanilla extract in there as well. And so speaking of that, you, you might've seen my perpetual vanilla extract video just come out this last week. And I want to touch on this because this is something that comes up, that's come up a few times. And what happens is people either mishear something or don't get all of the facts on something. And then they get all, they go all crazy with it. So let's talk a little bit about raw honey. Right here is the orange blossom honey I get from Azure Standard. I love this honey. I love the consistency of it for using in many things. In fact, I did use that in this particular soda instead of using the cane sugar, the organic cane sugar. Um, just to get more health benefits, I decided to use the orange blossom raw honey in there. Well, somebody saw that I was make, adding the this honey to the 
vanilla extract as I was making it. It's, it makes up a quarter of the amount of my solvent. So it's three parts spiced rum to one part honey, which is totally optional. I just have, I'm just always playing around with solvents when I'm doing different things. And I find I really like that. It kind of reduces the alcohol amount and flavor and adds a sweetness. But anyway, spice rum, that's the only thing I use spice rum for. And the only reason I stock up on it is for the sake of making vanilla extract. And yes, you can make it alcohol free. In fact, I have a new, though I already have a couple of alcohol free related extract videos. I have a new one coming out real soon. So be watching for that. So somebody saw me using that and noticed that the honey was um, very clear and smooth and not crystallized. And so they are immediately, why is it, why is it not crystallized? That means it's not real. It's fake honey if it's not crystallized. Okay, so here's what you have to understand about honey. If any of you thinks that honey is supposed to be crystallized when you buy it from the store or get it fresh, you obviously either don't keep bees yourself or have never got honey from anyone who keeps bees and know or even seen videos of honey coming out of a honeycomb. It's not crystallized when it's fresh. It's going to pour out of the honeycomb. Uh, there's been a few times in the past several years I was able to get honey from local sources and as soon as they got it out of the comb and it was amazing and it was delicious and it was not crystallized. Yes, real honey, that can be a good sign as if, you're real, if your honey crystallizes then you know it was real but it still is going to take time and where you store it and the type of honey, what it, what it, the flowers it's being made from is also going to have a say in how long it's going to take to crystallize in your storage. I've had some take years. I've had some take a few months, but the temperature will have a say in that as well. So the cooler the temperature of the honey that you're keeping it, the more likely it's going to crystallize pretty quickly. Whereas like in here, if I'm keeping it in the kitchen here where it's going to be a little warmer than back in our pantry, it's going to take much longer for it to crystallize. So I've got honey stored back in my pantry that is crystallized. This honey is still pretty new and still pretty fresh and it has not even had time to crystallize. But yes, I mean, some people actually like to have their honey crystallized. And me personally, I don't for a lot of things I use it for. I prefer not to have it crystallized. But you can, by just doing, just warming it gently, you don't want to heat it too hot if you're wanting to keep it raw, you can dissolve the crystals. And even using, I've used crystallized honey to make mead and eventually all of that dissolves anyway. So there's plenty of uses for crystallized honey, but just because you, when you buy it, it's, if it's not crystallized in the container, that does not mean that it's not real. It just means it's still pretty fresh and it hasn't been stored in a cool place. And like I said, the time it takes to crystallize can be anywhere from a few months to maybe a few years, depending on the type of honey and where you're storing it. So don't freak out about that stuff. Just know your sources. You know, some people just kind of get on this, they hear one little factoid and then all of a sudden all the honey in the stores, because none of it is bought in that form, is it's all fake. Well, no, that's not true. Yes, there's fake honey out there or honey that's been combined with corn syrup uh, to dilute it down and so they can make it for cheaper. And so, yeah, I'm very careful about the sources I buy from. And I trust Azure Standard, Glory Bee is another good place, or any local person who keeps bees. Those are ones to trust. So if you believe the lie that it has to always be crystallized, Go buy honey from a local source, directly from them, as soon as it's ready, and you'll see. You'll see. You can look at the bees, you can look at the honey, you can see that it's not, not crystallized coming right out of the comb. Or just watch a few videos on it, that's all you gotta do. And then as far as just extracts in general, whether it be medicinal extracts, vanilla extracts, everybody's gonna have their own opinion as to what is best. So I have a lot of different extract-related videos, and I just want to cover a few things like right here is a medicinal extract I'm making with mullein and this one is completely alcohol free. And in this case, I'm using one part vinegar to one part raw honey, meaning it's an oxymel. 
and I have a video coming out on this very thing. And that can be a very suitable option for many people, but it's not going to be suitable for everyone. Some people will have better results, especially with medicinal extracts by using just straight high proof alcohol. Whether it be the standard one, it's around 80 proof, you know, for your standard vodka, rum and more, which I never go any higher than that. Some people like to use the higher ones like Moonshine and... Everclear, I personally stay away from those. I have no use for those. I personally do agree with the fact that such high proof alcohol can damage certain components within your herbs, mushrooms, and more. And I don't like the flavor of it either. It just makes it taste even worse. But again, you can look these things up and find all kinds of different ideas. We're all gonna have our opinions and our own way of doing things. It doesn't make one person's way wrong or better than someone else. I've been experimenting with extract making both medicinally and for flavors for many years, and I found what I prefer depending on what it is I'm making. Also finding more ways to make a non-alcohol extract that I know I can feel totally safe giving it to my grandchildren, even with the raw honey because I wouldn't probably give this to Rowan at this time, something like this, but I would give it to my other two grandchildren because they're both over a year old, where Rowan just turned 10 months. So, and because of the raw honey, I would avoid that at her age for now. But don't take one person's word for it. And I certainly wouldn't base a person's opinion just on their education. Experience really matters, but even that is not good enough because what works for us and what I prefer isn't going to be the same as what's going to work best for you, your family, or what you prefer. And then another thing I want to touch on about the alcohol, like in the vanilla, like we don't drink. However, I keep, as I mentioned, the spice rum on hand. It's not for drinking. It's only for the sake of making vanilla extract with. Now, when you go to use vanilla extract, the most you're gonna use in any recipe is gonna be about a tablespoon. And then you're going to like in, uh, I have a cookie recipe, my uh, cowboy cookie recipe. I use vanilla extract in, I use a whole tablespoon in that. But when you consider the great amount of cookies that it's making, how many cookies you're gonna eat and how spread out it is and the fact that it's baked and the fact that it's food you're getting little to no alcohol in that. So if you're concerned about the alcohol content, I feel totally safe giving that to my youngest grandbaby. It's not going to harm her in any way. There's not going to be, there's no possible way you'd feel any effects from that because not only is it spread out, it's also baked, which is, means it's going to cook some of that alcohol out and being combined with food, the food is going to absorb in your in your when you're eating it is going to absorb any alcohol that's remaining it's such a small amount that people shouldn't be so concerned about about it but if keeping alcohol in the home is important not to do then yes you can use a combination of three parts glycerin to one part water mix that well i do recommend you allow it to sit longer and then in the case of vanilla extract then you definitely split your vanilla beans lengthwise because the glycerin isn't going to extract the flavor near as well as your alcohols are, like your vodka, your rum, your bourbon. Just some things to consider. But of course, the longer you leave it, and with the glycerin, I'd leave it as long as you possibly can with that. And yes, it'll be fine. Even though some people say glycerin extracts can only last for four months on a shelf, that, no. I've had glycerin extracts last for years. So I wouldn't let yourself worry about that. One thing I, be, I keep meaning to address, but I, I have to be careful at how I say this because this is another thing that can get me in trouble on a certain platform. Some of you know this and some of you don't. If you happen to be watching this video, you're one of the remaining maybe 50 to 60% that's still seeing my video show up in your feed and or are still getting notifications or you're one of those that realize the importance to, if you want to see my videos, you gotta go look for me. You gotta go directly to my channel, go to the video tab and see, and then you can go see all the new videos. So if you just happen to be stumbling upon this video and you haven't seen me in a while, well, I'm still putting out five videos a week like I've been doing for over seven years now. However, I've been 
all because of me calling out the certain platform that decided to remove a video for no good reason and they made a false accusation against me and against my video and then didn't give me a chance to really appeal it and so i spoke out i called them out on it they didn't like that they've been punishing me ever since and so as such my video views the views on my channel immediately started to plummet and I'm down to about half the amount of views I was getting before I did that and about half the amount of revenue and my subscriber gain has been far lower than it used to be. I, I've been getting people emailing me and very, and, or just saying, oh, there you are. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's like, no, I'm five videos a week, like always, both Rumble and YouTube. Well, it's because their stuff, my stuff is not showing. In fact, my, my good friends were, while I was at their house, they're looking on their phone and they, they're going through their feed and they're like, no, I haven't seen anything from you show up in my feed in nine days, or I haven't had a not notification from you in two months. And even though they're signed up for all that stuff. And so that's what's happening is like the lady that emailed me is like, where have you been? Are you okay? Cause she hadn't seen me in months in a couple of months. And so she was all concerned. It's like, still here, still per putting out videos. So the reason I'm sharing this is some of you may not understand this because you're still seeing my content as if nothing has changed, but it has changed drastically. And so what I really appreciate is anyone who can help me with this. Anytime you come across a video of mine that you really, really like and you think others could learn from it, please share that. Share to any and all social media platforms that you're on so that we can start getting those views again because what they're doing is they're actually blocking any kind of traffic coming in from various sources they even say so in my analytics they actually admit that that's what's happening well they word it a little bit differently but it's clear that's what they're doing so they have several different sneaky ways of going about it one is hiding and they're doing this to a lot of channels i know not just me but one of the ways is hiding that channel's newly published videos from their feed, not sending out notifications, even hiding the subscription button for those who are new coming into a channel and they can't subscribe because the subscription button is just totally gone. Sometimes hiding the like button. You'd be surprised how many views come in from other sources, whether it be from Facebook or X or um, Instagram, whatever it is they're actually blocking those from coming in but you can still help counteract that by sharing my videos sharing them share them in emails wherever wherever you can and to any other channel you see this happening to and if you haven't seen you know if not just me but if, if you've got other channels you follow that you haven't been seeing regular videos from that you know normally put out X amount of videos every week, like me, I always put out five, some always put out two or three. If you're not seeing it, that means you, they're pro the same thing is happening to them. They're probably still putting out the content. You're just not seeing it because it's being hidden from you. Oh yeah, the other way is constantly un unsubscribing people. Some people, I've had several people tell me every day they have to come in and resubscribe to my channel every single day which is crazy why do why do they keep unsubscribing that same person over and over and over again obviously they want to see my content or they wouldn't keep subscribing so it's just part of their games the more the more they go about it that way instead of just actually removing all the content the more people are clueless clueless to what's happening and it, it it's it doesn't make it as obvious so less people will come out and say something but then when you say something you know, as, as the content creator, then you get punished for that too, for calling them out on what they've done. And uh, yeah, I mean, what they did was wrong. They made a false accusation, they removed a video, and then they punished me because I called them out on their false accusation. Some people might call it, might call it biting the hand that feeds them, but you gotta remember, they get fed because of the content that we work hard to put out and put many, many hours into, that's how they make their money is from us. So don't tell me I'm biting the hand that feeds me when I'm the one that creates the content and they make a 30% off of everybody's content. Okay. A couple more things I want to cover real quickly. And that is starting later this week, February 1st, the fermented February collaboration with fermented homestead and many other channels. So 
Anna over there is heading all this up, so make sure you subscribe to her channel, which I'll be putting in the description box down below because there's going to be an, a new fermenting video coming out every day for the whole month. And I have closed out our own fermenting collaboration, and that's the photo collaboration, so that I can have it published at the end of February as well to make sure it's all part of the whole fermented February. It won't be a part of Anna's collaboration necessarily, but it goes with the whole theme, so I thought it would be perfect to get that out. So thanks for everyone who submitted their images and you'll be seeing that come out, I think it's the last Wednesday of February. That's when I plan on publishing that. And I think that was it. I think that I covered all the things I wanted to cover today. I had a lot more I wanted to talk about, but this video is already too long. So I'm gonna close this out. Any thoughts, ideas, things you'd like to share, please put those in comments down below. And don't forget to check out any, all, any of the videos and other links I'll be putting in the description box by clicking on more or show more, those words showing up somewhere right down here below the video screen. And thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.